Hello folks, welcome back! Apologize for having a disgusting, dirty, El Vagabundo Hobo Dose here. I have no idea how he got in the house. I have no idea why my cat didn't attack him. Jeez, but I'll have to have a little talk about who gets to come in the house. And Although he could have just given her some treats and that was the end of that. And unfortunately, because it is the week of Cinco de Mayo, and it's also Money in the Bank. Uh, Money in the Bank is going to be Sunday. I'll be doing a reaction video. I'm going to do some bad stuff. Oh, I'm going to be evil that day. Um, that And tomorrow, probably somewhat early-ish. It's because I want to keep an eye on that, that, that untrustworthy person El Vagabundo Dos Hobo or Hobo Dos or Hobo Vente Sink well I don't even I don't even know what he what he calls himself but for him I'm going to keep an eye on that shady character because he's going to be doing predictions for money in the bank because I think for the most part it's set I think there's going to be a bonus match maybe I don't know Unless I'll add, I might add a bonus in at the last minute because I think there's the men's and women's rooftop top match that takes place at the same time. That's that's going to take an hour at least. That should be actually pretty interesting. Uh, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, Bailey Tamina, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, and the four way for the for the SmackDown tag belt. So. Let's see here, one, an hour twenty. That makes sense. So, with all that being said, welcome. And wow, I don't know what Cinco de Mayo does to people, but it brings out everyone. So that's really cool to see. Oh, that's right, Sunny Bimbo. I forgot. So let's here, let me do one last quick little check because I didn't realize I have so many, so many thank yous to give out. Because for some reason, I don't know, maybe people are just, like, happy. Maybe they've just gotten all over this coronavirus thing. They're coming out. They just, maybe they just want, geez, human interaction. And there's only one more for him. That's interesting. Track two. What's that doing? I have to, I have to fill with this a little bit. That's okay. So let's see here. So I think probably the thank yous are going to be the bulk of the show. So uh, I have to get the show done, or at least get it started. So, well, actually, the show itself is not long. The editing is the processing is going to take a while. So let's see. Here. Let me start off my list here. Call. Thank you very much. I'm on, um, unfortunately, according to your profile, you are a minor. That'd be weird if we're friends. Because I think on your thing it says, yep, this is the dad who does the videos. It's for my son. That just seems weird. So, yeah, I'm not too sure about being friends. But still, thank you very much, Call. You have earned that six count.
goes for Sahara. The mid card act. This was, I think, during. Was it Impact? Or was it. Oh, no. I think it was when they aired uh, Dark Side of the Ring, which I'll be doing kind of an end of season review for. I think we were just talking about Coke and Hookers. Oh, no. I remember. Which decade was the greatest? The 80s or 90s? I forget what he said, but that's okay. Mid-card act, you're definitely a man from the 80s and 90s. You're playing the air guitar. Mike V. Again, I think another man of the 90s. And you know what it was like to carry around the big old boombox? But you're listening to your briefcase boombox. Wow, this is becoming like what happened to me for um, Triple Mania. Because Triple Mania is only a few months away. That's good. And actually, I'll, I'll give a quick little news update. Double or Nothing is going to be May 23rd, so barring some miracle happening at my other job, I will be doing a review of that. And in fact, I think by then, I won't get paid. So I'll probably have a projector, so I have to rearrange various things here in the office. So that'll be a... Interesting new setup. So, but Dario Cueto, number dos. You, sir, can crawl out of here. <laughs> and then this is, I think, when we got into to hookers and coke. <laughs> the 80s and 90s, the late 80s, early 90s were the best. From like 85 to 96 was probably the most entertaining part. From what I can think of, at least. Uh, tra -la -la, you always win by dirty pin. Dronzo, you, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band.
<laughs> it's always good to hear from this man, Vince's penis. Holy shit. Hit me! You don't want to hit it. Well, you might want to hit this. Because Jordan has some back. Oh my god. Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. She's any spaghetti. I think I finally got your name right. You, sir, because I know this was definitely from today. I forget what it was. In, I think we were talking about Scooby Doo. It had to do with Daphne or Velma. Oh, God. Wow, we get so distracted while watching pro wrestling sometimes, especially the bad matches or the not so good show matches. You, sir, are that luchador on a forklift. Then finally, Let's see if I get this right. Zarcasmi. I do apologize if I get that wrong. I kind of scribbled that in as close as I could. But. See here. I put down? Oh, you are a you sir have definitely participated in Mundo Madness. And then Sonny Bimbo, you only have one more thank you left before you, sir, become a member of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. I don't know what division I'll put you in. I'll definitely think of something, though. Um, again, you only have one more time to leave a comment because this will be your second to last video. Thank you, because thank you very much. I think you were with me kind of from the beginning. So again, you've earned that spot on the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League locker room. And you, sir. You told Nikki Cross to take it all off? And that's all the thank yous. Again, it's going to be interesting on in the next couple of weeks. I know here in Florida, they've actually opened things up. Um, and for AEW, they're back at the Daily Center. And there were like some people there, I think, even though it's not open to the public, there were still, I think, some families of the wrestlers in the stands because there were like kids there for some reason. Uh, the wrestlers were kind of had, the wrestlers themselves had ringside seats. I think some like family members. I think it was just family members because there were some kids there. And like, again, the immediate crew was there. So I'll tell you what, AEW's done things right. I think on my list of things that have done things right, AEW's number one. I think Impact's, Impact's like two. Actually, AAA is three. Because I'll tell you what, just the AAA characters themselves are just 
out there. But that's okay. But I'm not here to talk about AAA yet. I'm here to talk about some AEW. It starts off, again, this is from Daily's Place here in Jacksonville, Florida. Yes. I think as one person mentioned, Jacksonville has become become a waste. Uh, all of Florida has become like a wasteland. I'm just waiting to loot shoe stores, make myself a loincloth out of Chuck Taylors and Sperry's, and roam the streets with a spear hunting squirrels and pigeons. What can you say? So AEW starts off again, starts off with highlights from last week, which is pretty good. And it's, again, it, it wasn't like a WWE highlight package. It was very succinct. I don't think it lasted five minutes, so that's really good. Again, you get into that five minute. This is what happened last time. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember this. Oh, oh gee, I do remember this. Um, I think one or two minutes of running down the matches for tonight. So, again, overall, it only took, again, at most seven minutes from the start of the show to the first match. And once the match starts, they don't they don't play around. They just get right through the matches. So it starts off with Cody Rhodes taking on Joey Janela. And this was interesting because this was kind of that like friendlies match. Starts off with a handshake. Um, actually, the wrestling was pretty good. Starts off with some rope, rope running, some roll-ups. And then it's like, then it starts to get testy really quick. It's just that slap, slap. They trade slaps. Now it's on, baby. Let's see here. There are a couple people. Again, ring, a notable ringside. Sheeta, Chris Statliner was there. Pineapple Pete's there. Uh, the guns are there. The guns, I think, have to live in Florida somewhere. That or, that or Georgia. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they lived in, like, St. Simon's Island, because that's right between the two. QT Marshalls and Georgia. So it's all relative. I know Jake the Snake was somewhere here in Florida. I mean, all old people come to Florida. Because the old joke in Florida is that Tampa is actually God's waiting room. That sounds terrible, but it's the truth. Um, well, getting to the wrestling, and uh, Cody does that standing vertical delayed suplex. Still looks great. Again, just the fact that all the blood rushes to Joey Janela's head. But then Joey Janela has a little comeback. This this is good. This is a good match because again, there's a little bit back and forth between the two. Um, Joey does his own stuff. It stomps to the back of the head. Uh, then then on the outside, Cody got sent to the barricade, and Cody Rhodes broke the barricade. And this time, the barricade makes sense because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade, cuckoo, cuckoo, because actually there are people there. So I, granted, it's, it's not a crowd. Yeah, and there's some like family members and like kids there. They just want to see their pops wrestle. Who knows? Or, or I don't think Chris Tatlin is married. I don't think Cody has kids. But yeah, definitely. Like DDP was there. You can see him. He was probably there with Jake the Snake. So again. It wasn't much, but they added some. Oh, and then Sean Spears brought an air horn. Yes! Noise! Sean Spears, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, what's that? Oh, yeah, he had, yes. Spears with air horn. Yeah, it just makes it sound louder. Again, the, ac the ac acoustics. Of the Daily Center actually makes it feel more full than it actually is. Mainly because it's a theater and they're in the front part. So they don't necessarily need to have a hot mic under the ring. The way the acoustic works is that anyone that really talks with any volume voice, you can actually hear a minus like like the um, touching the ceiling seats. Like if you're in the first couple sections, where kind of everyone was, and it's where the camera is. So again, it picks up that sound naturally. A nice difference, so it's not it's not fake sounding like I know at uh, WrestleMania, mainly because it's an outdoor arena. They put they literally put like a, this live mic and like crank it up. You can hear every time someone hits the mat, and you know it's fake because it has that weird electronic reverb sound at the end. 
Uh, if you've never been to an open air arena match where they have the live mic underneath the ring, you might not know what I'm talking about. But I uh, just think, let's see here. Yeah, it has a, like, like if you hit this mic, it has a weird sound at the end. So, yeah. So, this, this doesn't have it. This is, more, this is all not for all. Uh, let's see here. Yep, so, Cody broke the barricade. Uh, Joey gets beat up. Then there was Cody did a moose off the stage. Jody did an L drop, elbow drop. Uh, Joey did some botch where it looked like, if you think about the way when they run, run to the corner, they kind of kick their feet up. It looks like he couldn't get all the way. I, I also don't know how tall Joey Janellis is. I'll, I don't know how likely he is to do that, but if that's like the low point, that's not bad. Um, Cody, again, he did that reverse superplex. That obviously should, should have been the end of the match. Joey hit the macho elbow drop. The savage elbow, they call it. Same thing. Uh, no pinfall. Cody kicks out at two. Cody does reverse superplex. Joey Janela kicks out at two. He takes the weight belt off. And Sheeta gets a little souvenir. Cody, you have a wife. You can't give your weight belt just any random, cute, hot Japanese woman in the audience. You should give it to Brandy. Or, I don't know, Billy Austin Gunn probably deserves one. Actually, Pineapple Pete probably deserves a weight belt of his own, too. Uh, Joey Janela does that catch German suplex because Cody went for a disaster kick. Uh, Joey Janela caught him with a catch German suplex. That was great. The Cody cutter. And there was a little brawl. They traded punches. So either the one twos or, or, or yay boos, whatever you want to call it. They, then they brawl some more. Cody hits the crossroads finally. It did get long in the tooth a little bit because they did try and trade pinfalls. If that's my only complaint, it's still pretty good. Remember, this is a single D mile week. This was a mofongo of a match. Then they had a little video package about the women's division. Eh, it was okay. Again, AEW's women's division on paper looks absolutely terrific. In practice, it's lousy. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. No, that's not beer. I just need a little sip of something. I think today I've been on... I got very little sleep last night. Because... Why was that? I don't know. Because last night was single D minus. So I probably had a little bit too much to drink. Woke up. Uh, had way too much caffeine. Collapsed for a nap for like a, I took a three hour nap today. Even my, normally my naps like in the last an hour. Like, I thought I think I rested my head at four forty. Next thing I knew it was seven thirty. I'm like, uh oh, I better do stuff. Again, my body is not used to waking up at eight a.m. yet. It's going to be used to it pretty soon. And once my other job starts, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. So then, actually, I should be losing some weight. So, so part, I don't know, part of this is going to change. I know I show it to my other job. They're like, you look different. Like, one, I think they never saw me with this much scruff on my face. Two, because I would show up to work, I'd always be wearing pants and a button-down shirt. And I showed up, like, in sandals, a wrestling t-shirt, and, and jean shorts. So, I, I don't know. I almost didn't recognize you. Yeah, this is what happens. Although they see pictures of me when I shaved my face, they probably wouldn't recognize me either. This probably will get trimmed down in, I don't know, a few weeks. We'll figure something out. I'll do the reverse of what I did, just let it grow out. Who knows? Uh, but the next match was Nyla Rose taking on Kenzie Page. Yeah. They announced Kenzie Page being barely legal, just being 18 years old. I guess she can enter the ring at 18. As long as as long as it's not a mass transit incident, I'm kind of okay with it. So it's hard to complain about that. Uh, this is just a jobber. Uh, jobber, she, she tried. She threw a punch. Nyla Rose blocked it. Nyla Rose beat her up, put her in the beast bomb one time. 
He's like, no, 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 no. I'm not done having fun yet. For, just to get the quick of it, three power bombs to poor Kenzie Page. Kenzie Page, it did. Uh, Nyla Rose wins. I don't, I don't, they could have done it to me. I would have sold it better. This is a churro of a match. Then there was an MJF promo, uh, followed up by a Sean Spears promo. Then we go ringside. So with that being said, the next match, yeah, it was Frankie Gazarian taking on John Moxley. This was actually really fun. Uh, it starts off a classic wrestling match, very technical. You, uh, John Moxley is a master of the top wrist lock. He must have hurt, learned that from, from Shooter while he was over in New Japan. Again, very technical. Uh, Moxley. Again, the, the trade of chops. Every time Frankie Gazarian would chop him, Mox is just like, bring it. Give me more. Whoa, Mox. Tranquilo a little bit there, buddy. So, so that was pretty good. Uh, Frankie Gazarian, event, he is the master of the side headlock takedown. Moxley tried to counter that. Again, they do great chain wrestling. Um, then there was some like botch, like Gazarian did some botch landing. It's the typical thing by the ropes where Moxley went to deliver a back body drop or belly to back suplex. He over rotates Frankie Gazarian. Frankie Gazarian kind of does a flip. But I think he's not used to that ramp because he kind of like slipped. It honestly, it looked like he tweaked his ankle. I'm like, oh, that's not good. Because he was grabbing his knee. I'm like, nah, that's not a knee. That's like an ankle tweak. He might have tweaked it and just said, no, I'm good. Because even Moxie looked confused. The ref is like, okay, I have to check on him. Then they went to commercial, so they kind of covered that up. On TV by commercial. So, but yeah, that was, that was kind of like the only botch. Every so often there's a botch. It wasn't... This one was... This one, the Joey Janelle one, were fairly obvious. So, hey, this... The thing is, this is Florida. If you're outside, one one the wind does whip through the Daily Center because it's right along the river. And again, you could tell when Nyla Rose came out, she has the flame shooting up. And instead of the flame shooting up straight, all the flames kind of shifted the way the wind did. I know here in Daytona Beach, the humidity, for whatever reason, plays havoc because the ropes, for some reason, are eternally slick. From moisture, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the cold steel, if it's because they're not ropes, but there's steel cables wrapped in a in a rubbery protective thing. So I don't know if it's the temperature difference, because the steel because the metal will hold the cold longer, especially if it's like kept in like a again a very controlled place like the performance center might have their own little climate control. Once you bring that out to Daytona Beach Air. Everything goes straight to wet, and not the good wet either. Because I know if I check the mail in late July, all of August, and early September, I just have to walk out the door, and, and I just, oh, I'm a dripping mess. So, yeah, I don't know how the wrestlers deal with the Florida humidity, but I guess it's better than dealing driving through snow. Who knows? The, the trade-offs are, are, are odd. Unless they're in San Diego where, or Hawaii where it's like perfect all the time. Uh, so where was I in this match? Yep, so the botch. Mox begins to beat up Frankie Kazarian outside the ring. Very typical. Frankie Kazarian did a backslide to get in, back into the ring. And he also hit the... Re, he reversed the paradigm shift into a three-on-one kind of pretzel lock submission thing, which is pretty cool. It's like a cross-arm puller with a leg. The ground, then there was a full Nelson to sending switch to a German suplex. Frankie Kazarian, listen, say what you will about him, he's a very technical wrestler. And I have no problem with saying that. And that's, I say that very complimentary. Uh, does multiple, again, with this, there are so many roll ups. It gets kind of old after a while. But still, eventually there was one roll up, but Moxie, I've had enough of this paradigm shift. Match over. This was a good John Moxie wings and in a you know, another quality mofongo of a match.
Then the Dark Order comes in. They beat up Moxley. They beat up Frankie Kazarian. Frank, uh, SCU. SCU! Tried to make the save, but no, they just get beat up. There's too many creepers there. Uh, eventually, uh, Brody Lee comes in with a disco slayer. He says, I want to fight you, Mox. So I think for double or nothing, because next week will be the take the go home show. So double or nothing is going to be John Moxie versus Brody Lee. That should be entertaining. 2 2 XWW, you guys were allowed to finally go at it without. Vince's restrictions. Yes. Uh, and then Brandy, she, she talks, she starts to talk trash about the murder hawk. And of course, she's talking up her, her hubby, Cody. Then she drops the F bomb. Whoa. Brandy can't say the F bomb on TNT. Yeah. Well, she'll tell you how to come on things. Next was QT Marshall, a member of the Nightmare family, or they do have a name for it. I forget what it is, though. Uh, taking on Lance Archer, and Lance Archer's things every time he comes out, so, so, some jobber in the stand dies. Uh, this is Jason Kane, or Jasper Kane, or, or ja I don't know. S someone he just like decided to murder. I'm fine with that. Oh, the other thing. They had the full announce team. It was Tony Schiavone, Excalibur, and Jim Ross. I kind of miss Jericho at commentary. He was good. There's really a big difference between Tony Schiavone and Chris Jericho versus, with those two, versus Tony Schiavone and Chris Jericho. Maybe they have more history together. Who knows? Uh, QT Marshall, for the most part, just gets beat up. Uh, the choke slam on the apron yeah, is, for the most part, a squawk, a modified Vader bomb. QT did get in his two shots, yeah, well, whatever that was. Uh, then QT got tossed to the outside. Brit, this is probably kind of the most entertaining part of the match, was that Britt Baker went to hit QT Marshall with a shoe. I guess that's her thing. That's what role models do. But Brandy then took the shoe and tossed it into the empty arena. So for the rest of the match, Brandy's... Uh, I'm sorry, not Brandy, but but Britt Baker's going around barefoot. Which, which is kind of weird. She's skinny as is. She's those bony toes, too. Ugh! Ah, not my thing. Oh, hey, Adam Cole, power to you, sir. You married a dentist. You're set for life. But yeah, so so that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. There was the black heart by Archer when QT Marshall had been eventually gets in the ring. But no, he does the heel thing. Lifts up QT's head. Not done yet. There's an EBD, which is a claw head smash into the ring. That was pretty cool. Uh, so Lance Archer wins. It was a squash match, but there was enough entertaining stuff. The squash match is definitely a taco of a match. But it's not the most entertaining part, because the most entertaining part was when Britt DDT Brandy Rhodes on the outside of the ring. And then Lance Archer picked up Brandy Rhodes' dead body. And I'll tell you what, he just like, he just like spread. Sp like, he got her in the ring, and he just, like, lifted up her one leg, like, showing anyone on the entrance wrap all of Brandy's brand. Then Jake the Snake comes in, brings in the snake, puts the snake on top of Brandy. Yes! Nostalgia is so awesome. I remember when Jake the Snake would do that to everyone. Damien's now 30 years old, although I thought this is the same one. This is cool, though. And then Taz tries to interview Darby Allen. Darby Allen's just like, whatever. Then we have our main event of the evening. And oh my god, this is so amazing. Uh, Chris Jericho and Sandy Guevara, less sex gods. Take on Kenny Omega and broken Matt Hardy. Yes, but 
Simon Nero. Yes. This is great. It starts off, Matt, Matt just bites Sammy Guevara's hand. Uh, does a turnbuckle delete. Delete, 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 delete. Oh, that's so good to see. While, while the camera focuses on that, Omega's going out. The, the two uh, people from, went from Boo Canada, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega start to fight. I don't care about the Canadians, whatever. Uh, then... Yeah. I, I also like the fact that one, when... when he came out, Chris Jericho, he just swung. He came out with a baseball bat, and he swung at Pineapple Pete. I think this is going to lead up to a match next week, Pineapple Pete taking on Chris Jericho. That should just be entertaining. But then, I also like the fact, because it was a street fight, and a kind of unsanctioned match, the referee just, he started to count, and it's like, oh, I don't have to count you. I, I can't, nothing I can do anyway. He's like, looking around, why the heck am I here? But they also came out in jeans and knee pads. That's that is the t-shirt, jeans, knee pads. That's smart street fight mentality. Uh, then Jericho and Hardy they wrestle into, into the entrance tunnel. Uh, Kenny and Matty gets double teamed by both Sammy Guevara and Jericho. Uh, then all of a sudden, Matt Hardy comes out. This nineties team extreme Matt Hardy. Wow. This is just so amazing. And then, then Tony Schiavone has to plug. You can actually order a little bit of bubbly. Bubbly, 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 bubbly. So you can actually order Chris Jericho sh champagne. Uh, Chris Jericho then eventually brings the brings the bat in after. Because we have Team Extreme. We, well, he did the line salt. Again, Chris and Sammy, they just double team. Omega, there's a line salt. Tree McSween, Matt Hardy enters in at this point. Does a side effect. Here we go. Chris Jericho then says, screw this. He brings in the baseball bat. Again, if you're in a street fight, you better bring a weapon. Baseball bat's a pretty good weapon. Gun's better, but gun's just straight out illegal. They did a lot of illegal stuff. I'm surprised those Jacksonville cops. This is like Jacksonville has now just become some post-apocalyptic wasteland right now. Uh, let's see here. Sammy has a shooting star press, but Omega got the knees up. So that fools him. Matt Hardy hit the twist of fate. And Matt gets a ladder. Omega gets a table. Matt, the Hardys cannot go anywhere without having at least one ladder and or a table. Wow, this was fun though. Hagar, uh, so they so they put Sammy Guevara's the table ladders and chair spot. Uh, Hagar, the only reason the ref's there, so he's there to count count to three, but Hagar pulls him out. Then they start brawling all to the empty stadium. And around and around and around we go where we end, no one will know. So there's an ice machine, and I was actually shocked that that ice machine still has ice in it. And then uh, Sammy Guevara gets, gets, gets flung into an ATM, and he just takes money from it. Wait a second. That's a federal offense. You just can't take money from an ATM machine. <laughs> Where are the cops at? He should be arrested. <laughs> and not sent to the local Ricky Ding Jacksonville jail, but sent to the federal penitentiary with, with, with Bubba, the, 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 the mass murderer, and, and who likes to do things to men, and, and a bunch of mean-looking black people. Whoa. And, yeah, that's what federal penitentiaries are like. There's, there's Baba who likes to do things to men, a bunch of mean-looking black people, and, and mean-looking Hispanic people, and probably even and just crazy white people. So there. I had all, I had all the topics. So there, no one can say I'm, I'm, I don't like, I'm racist. I just don't like anyone. Makes that simple. Then they got so much... Um, and then Matt Hardy should be charged with vehicular homicide. He took a golf cart. He drives the golf cart. <laughs> After he emerges from getting thrown into this ice container, he emerges as broke as Damascus arises from the ice. It's, it's the ice machine of change, I guess. But then he takes the golf cart. And starts to commit vehicular homicide. He runs over. He tries to run over Chris Jericho. He gets caught. 
He just gets bounced off to the side. He almost kills poor Sammy Guevara by vehicular homicide. Ah, oh, so much stuff. And then he said, Monkey of the Spots! I think he actually called Kenny Omega Spot Monkey at one point because there was the uh, scissor lift and like two tables. And you could tell there were two tables. <laughs> it's just so perfectly set up. So Kenny Omega goes, goes to the top and he starts to raise the scissor lift. And you're like, oh my. Uh, they lay out Guevara on the table. They do. They they don't get the spot in though, probably because that's an unsafe distance. I'm pretty sure the people in Jacksonville don't want their scissor lift to be used like that. And also, it seemed to be a pain because that was probably pretty slick metal too. But then the rest of the inner circle could come out. That was just so good. The Judas effect. Uh, Kenny Omega eats the pin, which is good because I don't want to see Matt Hardy eat a pin. I'll tell you what. I was thoroughly entertained, and after the after the day I had, you know what? This is a where is it? Ropa Vieja of a match. And I'll tell you what. Yeah, I called that a taco. This was a really mofongo show. So I'd like to thank everyone for everyone for watching. Tomorrow, unfortunately, you have to see uh, El Vagabundo Hobo Dose give his predictions for some reason. I don't know. Dr. Tom's still in isolation. Who knows? Uh, hopefully he doesn't have coronavirus. That would be very bad for this show. Uh, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And, I'll, and I guess I'll see everyone Friday. And you guys will see someone else tomorrow. Bye.